Hello, in this video we are going to create a choropleth map of household size in the Netherlands in 2021. We'll use data from Statistics Netherlands and download it through the PDOC services plugin. This video is part of the summer course for IHG Delft on creating data visualizations with graphs, maps and animations. You can also find the tutorial for free at gisopencourseware.org. The link will be provided in the description of this video. Open data for the Netherlands can easily be downloaded with the PDOC Services plugin. In the Plugins Manager, look for PDOC Services. Install the plugin and it will add a toolbar. Click on the icon and you will see a list of layers that you can choose, including the different uh, services that are available. We are looking for municipalities. In Dutch, municipality is gemeente and we want it as vector data that we can uh, manipulate, so we want WFS. Here in the metadata you can find a description and it says that this is uh, data for 2021 and that's the most recent one uh, that is currently available from uh, Statistics Netherlands CBS. Click on standard to add the layer to your map canvas. It's a big layer which will download from the internet and when it uh, shows up zoom to the extent of the layer. Because uh, the layer is quite large, it's difficult to open the attribute table, it will take time. Um, so we can also check the attributes in the layer properties. Scroll down in the information tab, you will find all the attributes that are in this uh, layer and you'll find their aantal inwoners, which means number of inhabitants, and aantal huishoudens, which means number of households. And those are the layers that we need for our calculation. Now this layer also has municipality boundaries that cover water bodies included in the municipalities and we need to filter them out because we're not interested in uh, showing those parts of the map. Without opening the attribute table we can do it by choosing select by expression from the toolbar and there is a field in the layer which is called water and if we load all unique values then we see that it has its attributes B, Ya, Ne, and Ne means no, so that's what we need to filter out, water equals Ne. Click select features and now we see in yellow highlighted the polygons that uh, don't contain water. Let's export the selected features and save them in the geo package. We create a new folder for this project on the hard drive, we call it Coroplith. And I save the database as municipalities and as a layer name, I choose municipalities without water. Click OK and now remove the original layer. Let's also save the project in the geo package. Choose project save to browse to the geo package and give the project a name, for example, Coroplit. Click OK. The next step is to calculate the amount of people per household. And we would normally use the field calculator from the attribute table, but we can also use this button. Then we don't have to open the attribute table. And the output field name will be people per household. And the output field type is decimal. Then under field and values, choose aantal inwoners, the number of inhabitants, and divide it by aantal huishoudens, number of households. In the preview we see that the number makes sense, so we click OK. The calculation is applied, but we still need to save it, so we need to toggle the editing and save the results. The next step is to style our choropleth map. So go to the layer styling panel and for choropleth maps we will always use the graduated renderer. And for value, choose here our calculated field with people per household. Click classify to see the result with the default color ramp. The color ramp goes from white to red and red is associated with something that's uh, bad. And here we need a more neutral color ramp because uh, we don't want to give any uh, judgment on the number of people per household. So choose something neutral like purples and we'll use seven classes. And by default, it uses the equal count or quantile mode, which uh, makes sure that all colors are equally represented. 
if we look at uh, the histogram, then we see that there are also a few uh, outliers and you can use this histogram to adjust the mode and the class boundaries. And here I think that natural breaks uh, gives a nice impression of uh, distribution in the country. In the tutorial, there's a link included uh, with a blog post about um, how to choose uh, these modes, uh, which I think is very important. Now the reader needs some uh, orientation and therefore it's useful to add labels. So we change to single labels and we need to use the name of the municipalities. In Dutch that will be the field gemeente naam. But it looks uh, already very crowded, so showing them all doesn't make much sense and we need to tweak a bit the visualization. So let's first go to the rendering tab and there Check the box to show all labels for this layer, including colliding labels. It makes it worse, but then we're going to change the data defined override using an expression to only select municipalities with more than 100,000 inhabitants. So, aantal inwoners, number of inhabitants, should be larger than 100,000. And click OK. Now this looks uh, less crowded, but it's not very uh, clear to read. So let's also tweak a few other settings of the labels. It would help to make a text buffer. So check the box to draw the text buffer. Uh, make it a bit smaller, 0 0.5, it should be enough. And now this uh, looks quite readable. You can tune it uh, more, but I'll leave it like this for this tutorial and save the project. So now we can finalize the map in a print layout. Go to Project, New Print Layout, and give it a name. For example, Household Size. And the first thing we need to do is to change the orientation of the sheet. The map of the Netherlands looks better when the sheet is portrait. Then we can add the map frame. I'll make it as big as the map sheet. Now use the Move Item Content button to uh, scale the map in the frame. You can use Ctrl scroll to make little steps with the mouse and make sure it fits nicely on the sheet. Now let's add a title, drag uh, a rectangle and uh, type there uh, the text of the title, household size 2021. And uh, let's adjust the font and uh, use Calibri, for example, or any other sensory font. And I use bold and make it big. Maybe even bigger will be better. Let's use 36. And horizontal alignment should be center, vertical alignment middle. Now let's add the legend. Uncheck the box for auto update so we can edit the legend. Let's add the title, people per household. Replace the text at municipalities with a space, so it will not be uh, shown. Let's change the fonts a bit. The item fonts, I'll make them uh, 10 points. I want square symbols, so I change it to 4x4. Four four. and I want to better align the numbers, so I give them all the same decimals. We need to change 2.5 to 2.50. Then I want to add some uh, text with uh, the data source and the author. And the data source here is uh, Statistics Netherlands, or CBS. And I add there that that was via PDOC. And at Cartographer, you can insert your name. And you can also use dynamic text for that. Uh, if there's a variable with your name, you can use uh, project author. And there you see on the map sheet that it fills in my uh, complete name. Adjust the font. I'll just use uh, Calibri light italic eight points. And I drag it so it's aligned with uh, the southern province of Limburg. For background, change it to gray. So that's the fill color of the map frame, light gray. And then we also need to make 
uh, the background of the legend transparent by unchecking the box there. I'm going to change the spacing a bit to get the title closer to the legend. So the space below the title, set it to zero. You can still further uh, improve it by uh, moving the labels a bit. But for this tutorial, I'll uh, leave it like this. You can export to PDF or to uh, PNG. Here I will export it to PNG. I'll use the defaults. And let's have a look at the result. That looks nice and uh, you can still crop it, of course, uh, in a program like this. And I overwrite it to have here the final result. If I scale it to a whole window, that looks uh, nice. As said, you can further improve it by editing, but now we can already start uh, interpreting what we see in the map. So in this video, you've learned how to create a choropleth map.